Hi everyone and welcome to this new video to talk about wallets and how to enable it on the XRP ledger. So there are different types of wallets and uh, it's not always easy to choose the one which is the most adapted for you. But as you might know, uh, there are like custodial wallets where a third party would hold the private key for you. Non-custodial wallet is the opposite where you hold the private key. We have hardware and software wallets. Uh, like on a key, for example, like a USB key for hardware or software that would be on a, on your phone. And the third one would be to create your own wallet using the, the SDKs which are provided to you. So it's important to know that on the wallet of the XRP Ledger, we have four fields. The first one is a seed. That's something we'll use pretty much actually, especially when we're using the SDK. It's a compact value that allows to uh, derive the private key and the public key. We have the private key, of course, which is the uh, used to sign a transaction. We have the public key, which is used to verify uh, the signature. And finally, we have an address, an address which typically, typically starts with an R, and that's public. So to give you a few example of, uh, examples of the wallet that exists on the XRP Ledger today, uh, some of the most popular, we have a Gem Wallet, which is a browser wallet, uh, easy to install click on the download button and then you would have like a small icon on top right of your browser. Another great wallet is a Crossmark on the XRP Ledger. Same thing, it's a browser wallet. So once you install it, you have it on the top right of your uh, of your browser. Another one that I can quote is uh, Saman, which is on iOS or Android. So a mobile wallet, uh, non-custodial as well. And uh, you can download it on the App Store or on the, or the Google Play. So here I'm going to show you how to also create a wallet using the SDK and the xrp.js library. Um, so we're going to look at also the four fields that I mentioned before. So first to create a wallet, this is only cryptography and we don't need a client. So as you can see also I created like a third file create wallet. This is where I'm going to, I'm going to call it. So to just create a wallet with, uh, with cryptography, we need to import the wallet class from xrpl. And you can do like constant wallet equals wallet dot generate. And that will create you a new wallet. You can console log this wallet. In my index.ts, I have used, uh, I'm using that function, create wallet. And in my terminal, if I run npm start, I will be able to see my wallet here. So you see, we have the public key, the private key, the address or classic address starting with an R and the seed starting with an S. Note that the private key here and the seed are uh, private, so you never share it with anyone. What you can share is the classic address. Typically, that's what you will share to receive funds. The XRP ledger supports two signing algorithms. We have a SecP 256K1 and ED25519. By default, when you create a wallet this way, wallet.generate, that will create an ED25519 uh, key. If you want to change that, you can use the ECDSA enum provided again by XRPL. You pass it to the function and you, def you decide which algorithm to choose. So SecP in that case. And if you use SecP, you'll see the difference with a private key, for example. It starts with 2-0 uh, mm -hmm. compared to the ED2519 where we, it starts with an ED. Mm -hmm. So this is only uh, cryptography at the moment. The account is not enabled on the XRP ledger. That means that you cannot send payments or execute other transactions such as minting an NFT. And this is valid for all the wallets, for Gem Wallet, Crossmark, Saman, and any other wallet uh, that you can have uh, on, on the internet. You need to add an amount of XRP to enable the account. So this is what we call the base reserve. So it's a minimum of XRP that is required for each address on the ledger to enable it again. And at the moment, the base reserve is 10 XRP. So you must send 10 XRP to enable your account. And then you need to send a bit more XRP to pay for the transaction fee. If you want to send payment again, or uh, if you want to create a, a talk, uh, an NFT, create a token, etc. So if we look at this wallet for now, and if we use the client, we'll see that we'll have an error that the, the wallet doesn't exist yet. So let's do a, a try catch. 
we'll console log the error. And I'm just going to try to get that account from the ledger and see the response. So we'll do a response equal await client.request. And for that, the command that I, I will use is account info. And I'm going to pass the account address. So wallet.classic address. If that's valid, then I will console log the response. But here it's won't be, will be in the console log.error. So let me show you how it looks like. We have an account not found. And it's normal. Again, it doesn't have 10 XRP. So what you can do is we can use the client here to fund that uh, wallet. Let me remove this and I'm going to use again custom response equal away the client this time. Uh, fund wallet. So fund wallet, if you don't pass anything to the function, it will create a new wallet for you. Otherwise, you can pass a wallet that, that has been generated before, in that case, uh, wallet here. That will send by default 100 XRP, but you can as well change that by passing an object as a second argument with an amount. And here we can define that, let's say we want to send 20 XRP. 20 is enough, we only need 10 to enable it. So let's do it again. I'm gonna <coughs> rerun npm start to fund that account. It's gonna take a few seconds for, for it to be funded. So now we have uh, this um, address. Okay, that was just actually the same wallet, but we have the balance now that is returned by this fund wallet function. If we go to an explorer, uh, I could use the same request as before, the account info, but let's, let's go to an explorer this time. And we are gonna pass the address and we can see that we have those 20 XRP. That's the first payment that I just executed. If you don't want to use the client and the SDK, uh, you can as well use some other services. For example, we have BitHump. Uh, so test, you see this address, test.xrplexplorer.com uh, slash en slash faucet. Uh, so BitHump provides like a faucet as well. So we can send XRP on testnet, devnet, or testnet for XAO. So you enter the address of the account you want to fund, the destination tag if needed, and the sum amount in XRP. So let's for example, use the account that I used before, same one with 20 XRP, and we are going to add 10 XRP to it. Like this, that should work. It's going to take a few seconds again for the transaction to be validated. And done. We have 10 XRP added. If I go back to my Explorer and I refresh the page, Now I have 30 XRP, another 10 XRP payment here. So that's in, of course, testnet, devnet, and SAO. But if you are on mainnet, of course, there is no faucet. And what you need to do is either you can go to a, a SEX, a centralized exchange, such as, again, Binance, Coinbase, Kraken, etc. You buy some XRP there and you send it, you send those XRP to your wallet. Alternatively, uh, if Another wallet allows you to do some on-ramp, so buying XRP directly with a, your credit card, for example, you can do that. And the third one that I can think of is that if you have a friend, if you know someone who has XRP in its wallet and is willing to send you a payment, then you can do that as well. You can receive some XRP from uh, your colleague, your friend. And that's it. So then once the account is uh, enabled, you're ready to use it and um, send transactions on the ledger. I hope that was useful. Let me know if you have any questions in comment. Bye.